Hi everybody, in this video we are looking at three processes, active transport, endocytosis and exocytosis. Um, and I've put them in one video because these are all active processes, they all require ATP. So first of all, active transport. So active transport takes place across um, cell membranes and they're made of phospholipid bilayers, uh, which you can see here. And active transport transports substances from areas where there's a lower concentration to areas where there is a higher concentration, sorry, higher concentration of that substance. And to be able to do that, a carrier protein is needed. So here's our carrier protein. It spans all the way across the membrane. And you can see that it's kind of like a gate. So at the moment on this side, the side near the uh, area of low concentration, it's open, but it's closed over here. So to transport the particles across the membrane, first of all, the particle has to bind to the carrier protein. And then ATP has to bind to the other side. When ATP binds, um, it, it's hydrolyzed into ADP and inorganic phosphate. And when that happens, you get energy release. And the energy release is what causes the shape of the carrier protein to change. So you can see now this side is open. So that means that our particle is able to move across to where there's a higher concentration. When the ADP and the PI then get released, that then causes the protein to go back to its original shape so that the process can continue. So exocytosis is um, a form of bulk transport. So exocytosis and endocytosis are bulk transport. So they can move um, large numbers of particles at once. So again, it takes place across um, a membrane. So this is the cell surface membrane. I haven't drawn all of the phospholipids, but of course it is a phospholipid bilayer. So we could say that we've got um, outside of the cell and inside of the cell. So in exocytosis, we're moving substances from the inside to the outside. And so we've got something which would be inside a vesicle. So this is a vesicle which is pinched off from the Golgi body um, and it's got something inside, maybe it's some kind of enzyme. And the vesicle has to move towards the cell surface membrane. When the vesicle gets to the cell surface membrane, the two membranes, which remember are both made of phospholipid bilayers, they fuse together. And when they fuse together, it means that there's now an opening to the outside of the cell. But what's important is the outside of the cell at no point came in contact with the inside of the cell. So if we go back again, because of the way that the phospholipid bilayer is able to fuse, the outside of the cell here and the inside of the cell at no point do they come into contact. Now the vesicle is fused, the contents of the vesicle can move out. So that's exocytosis. In, the, in order to do that, ATP is needed. Endocytosis is basically just the opposite. So this time we're going to take substances from outside of the cell and we're going to move them inside of the cell. So the cell surface membrane, it um, is going to end up, you know, sec. So it's going to form um, a vesicle like this, if I just go back. So we start off with our cell surface membrane like this, and it pinches off. Um, sometimes the see you see the word invaginate. Okay, so the cell surface membrane invaginates, which means it forms this kind of like pinched off part, which is going to become a vesicle. The substances are able to move in, and then the cell surface membrane fuses behind it. And again, by doing this, again, the outside of the cell and the inside of the cell are never in contact. So it fuses together, the vesicle then pinches off and is able to move inside the cell. Now there are two kinds of endocytosis. One of them is phagocytosis. So we're familiar with that when we think about uh, white blood cells. Also, this is how lots of uh, unicellular organisms like amoeba uh, take in their nutrients. So they do, they do phagocytosis to bring in their food substances from outside the cell, inside the cell. And then we've also got pinocytosis, which is basically the same thing, 
but the vesicles are much smaller than get made that get made so of often pinocytosis involves taking liquids in and the vesicles end up being very small okay fairly straightforward very short hopefully you follow all of that thank you very much